All right, welcome to the video on factoring. Um, so now that we know how to do the distributive property, let's consider kind of like the reverse concept, which is called factoring. <clears throat> See, distributive property is the idea that a times b plus c is equal to a b plus a c. So you learned how to f uh, distribute a term through other terms. In this video, you will learn how to factor out terms out of an expression, from an expression. So in this first expression, we have x squared plus x. So what you're attempting to do is recognize, you, we want to learn to recognize the situations in which factoring is possible. So basically how that's done is noticing similarities in the different components of the expression. So this first one, both of them share an x. So if I factor out an x, you know, and essentially divide each one of these by x, so I can factor out one of them, uh, this first term here is going to drop to, because remember now, x to the m over x to the n is equal to x to the m minus n, right? So x to the 2 over x to the 1 is x to the 1, and x to the 1 over x to the 1 is x to the 0, which is 1. <clears throat> so this is the factored expression. x squared plus x factors to x times x plus 1. Notice what happens if we apply the distributive property. So I, fact, I distribute the x back through each one of these terms. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is x. And notice we're right back where we started. So Factoring is simply the reverse process of distributing. In the next problem, we have 15x cubed minus 10x squared. Now remember, what you're doing when you're trying to factor out an ex factor an expression is looking for like terms, things that are similar within the two, and basically performing an operation that's opposite of the distributive property. So in this expression, you may notice that uh, something that's shared by the 15 and the 10 is a 5 and the x cubed and the x squared both share x squared since x cubed is simply one more x on top of that so we have two things that are similar within each term in this expression so we're gonna factor both of those things out so we get 5x squared times now since we factored a 5 out of 15x15, 15 15, we really are going to divide this by 5 to get the inside. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. Notice now 5 times 3 is 15. So and we factored out an x squared, so you factor out 2x's out of this 3x's, and you're left with 1x. Now here, you got a minus and 10. So how many times does 10 go into 5, or 5 go into 10? Well, that's 2 x squared, if you factor out all of it, x squared, what are you left with? 1. So we can just leave this as 2. And that's our final uh, factored expression. Now, once again, notice, if I was to distribute this term back through this expression, I would achieve 15x cubed minus 10x squared, which is the original expression. All right, let's see. All right, this next example looks a little bit hairier because you have products of multiple variables, like such as xy and xy squared and stuff like that. But the process is the same. Look for l things that are similar or contained within each component of the expression. So the first thing I notice right away is that two a 2 is a part of the 4, the 8, and the 6. So I'm going to go ahead and put 2 here as one of the factoring terms I'm going to pull out. Now I do notice that each one of these has an x, but this is the lowest one, so I have to go with the lowest. So I'm going to go 2x, and each one has a y as well, but it has two of them with just a y to the first. So 
So this is what it looks like. We're going to pull out the 2xy out of this expression. What does that leave us with? Well, for 2 to become 4, we need another 2. For x to become x squared, we need to add our x. And y to become y is just 1 minus. So if I factored out a 2 out of this 8, what do I have? 4, right? Now if I factor an x out of this x, what do I have? 1, right. It's kind of like dividing it. If I factor out a y out of this y squared, what do I have? y, right? And the second part, or the third portion here, 6, if I factor a 2 out of a 6, what do I get? 3. And if I factor an x out of a 6xy, if I factor an x out of an x, I just have 1, right? And if I factor a y out of a y, I just have 1. So that looks good. Now we can check our pro we could check our answer, our solution using the distributive method once again. 2 times 2 is 4. x times x is x squared and y because there's nothing to multiply with the y's. And you go minus because this is minus here. 4 times 2 which is 8 x y squared because it's y times y. The third portion here we have a plus 3 times 2 which is 6 or 2 times 3 I mean and x times there's no x's there's no y's so it's just going to be 6 x y and notice this once again is the same as the original <clears throat> I hope this is becoming a little easier it's kinda hard to try to explain this alright but just keep looking for things that are similar within each expression alright so in this expression here, we have an x, it looks like, is the only thing in common, right? So we'll factor out the x. Now, what times x is equal to 4x squared? 4x. And I keep mixing up the way I'm saying this in order to expose you to maybe slight variations of the idea so that maybe one of these ways I say it might actually make it click. So anyway... Now notice, if I was to multiply this back through, just at this point, I'd get 4x squared. So that's correct so far. Notice the minus here. So we're going to put our minus there. And if I factor an x out of an x, what do I get? 1. Now why is that? If you're having any confusions about that, you're factoring an x out of an x. So according to the laws of exponents, you have x to the first over x to the first. Well, that's x to 0 and is by definition 1. All right? Okay, so the next problem. 3x to the 4th minus 9x squared. What is in What do these two uh, terms in this expression have in common? A 3 and an x squared, right? Keep in mind that the x to the fourth is really just four x's while this is two x's so I could always factor out two of those x's alright so three x squared is our common factor so we go ahead and pull that out and that leaves us with what do we multiply three x squared by to get three x to the fourth well we're gonna need those two other x's right so x squared and how do we what do we multiply 3 by in order to get 9 well that's going to be 3 and uh, if you factor out x squared from 9 here or wait 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 so x squared times what is x squared 1 right so we're going to just leave it like that now check your answer through the distributive property you get 3x to the 4th minus 3 times 3, which is 9x squared. And notice this as well is the same as the original. Good way to make sure you didn't make any arithmetic mistakes. 
Now on this last problem, we have 2x plus or times x plus y plus 5y times the quantity of x plus y. What do these terms have in common? The x plus y's. So you could factor out this entire little expression in parentheses out of each one of these. And 2x times x plus y, if I was to factor out one x plus y term, it just leaves me with 2x, right? And if I was to do the same here with the 5y, it just leaves me with the 5y. So I get 2x plus 5y. Well, how do you check your answer? You just distribute this whole term through, and you get 2x times x plus y plus 5y times x plus y. All right, so that's a little bit on factoring. Uh, we'll go ahead and do some more examples, but I hope this is kind of starting to make more sense. All right, so after this video, I will come out with another video on different types of factoring problems, as this one is basically just common factors. But there's other types, too, that like special factors and factoring by grouping there's just more information on this topic so before moving on this is the video on common factors which you know you're finding common things within an expression so the other videos will come out soon but let's go ahead and do three more problems in common factoring group so for the first one here we have 5x minus 15 what is common between these two terms in this expression the 5, right? So there's a 5 here and a 5 here, so I could factor out a 5. Well, that'll leave me with x minus 3, right? So if I distribute it back through, I get 5x minus 15, which is what we started with. So the answer, the factored, if it says factor this expression, the answer is 5x minus 3. You're not really solving for anything. Factoring is just about manipulating information, kind of like using it like it's Play-Doh or something. So the next one, 2x to the fourth plus x squared. What is similar within both of these expressions? The x squared, right? So we get x squared times, the first one is going to be 2x squared, and then if I factor an x squared out of x squared, I get 1. If I multiply these back together, or distribute, I get 2x to the fourth plus x squared, which is what we started with. So the final factored solution to the problem is 2x squared plus 1 is this. Last problem, what is common within each one of these terms in this expression? If we're going to factor this expression, the 3, right? So it's 3 x. Now if I take a 3 out of the 6, I get 2. Didn't do anything with y. And if I take a 3 out of the 15, I get 5. So this is the final factored expression. To see if we're right, just distribute it right back through. So 3x minus 6y plus 15. Well, that's true. All right.